Hi families, I hope everybody's well. Well, the big news that everybody is waiting for is who is the new head teacher of Lairdstown Primary and Early Year Centre. So um, the local authority made an appointment on Friday and I am delighted to share, so everyone attached with the talking news will receive this letter, that a lady by the name of Mrs Jennifer Murphy will be the new head of Lairdstown. She presently works in um, Western Bartonshire and she is moving over to us. Now, the way the letter is worded, it speaks about um, Mrs Murphy taking up post um, on the 11th of March, so that would be week beginning of the 11th of March, and in the interim period, I will still remain as head teacher. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to stay. I am still going to go and take up post in Lindsay Meadow on the 14th of February. But what we have agreed is that I will still strategically support Lennox Town Primary while Caroline Linscale is acting head. So Caroline will be the acting head for the four week period in between. But I will still kind of hold that I suppose it's the email responsibility of all the things that drop in in the background and just be there as a support. And that's just for consistency um, until Mrs Murphy starts. So I haven't spoken with her yet. I anticipate she will be in touch in the next few days, but I'm sure she is very excited and very delighted to be joining Lennox Town Primary. Um, other wee bits and pieces. Thank you to the families who joined us this morning for Look In and Learn. It was lovely to see all of you. Just a little reminder in terms of um, parental engagement. We have our very first class assembly of session 23-24 with primary one kicking off. So all of the families for primary one, you are most, most welcome to join us tomorrow morning for their assembly. The assembly will aim to start round about half past nine, but again, we are aware you are coming for drop off in the morning. So if you just come in out the playground in the morning and you can take your seat in the hall, just while the boys and girls are getting organised and then we will get started. So very exciting. I have been treated to them practising. You are in for a really big treat. Um, another little, a couple of shout out things. I am always mindful over the winter months that it is cold. It is cold. We know because we're out there. And boys and girls will wear an extra layer. They might wear a hoodie. They might wear like a fleecy jumper. Now, I, I am flexible over over in terms of layers of warmth. However, we are seeing some, I don't know, fashion variables in terms of school uniform, particularly with some of the boys and girls in the upper primary. So can I request that, yes, it's okay to wear a hoodie or a cosy jumper over uniform, but we make a really big effort to ensure that we are wearing uniform. Um, moving forward, you know, starting next week, and Miss Linskillen had actually spoken to me about this before Christmas, and it dropped off my radar, um, we will ask children to remove the hoodies and any fashion wear. And when they're in the building, they are clearly identical, identifiable in their school uniform. So can we ask for your support with that? If you are short of polo shirts and sweat shirts, we've got millions. We have so many that families give into us just for that whole recycle, reuse, sustainability agenda. So if you're short, particularly sevens, because I'm not suggesting for one second, if your son or daughter is wearing a hoodie because they've grown out of their polo shirt or sweatshirt, that you go out and buy a whole new wardrobe. Absolutely not. But what I can tell you is we have loads and loads that we can give you. So please support us. Let's get the boys and girls back in full uniform, um, particularly when they're inside the building. They can put the hoodies on to go out to play at playtime. Uh, that's not a problem at all. But we would like to see boys and girls in full uniform. Talking of playtime, it has come to my attention that some families were concerned about the wet weather, wet plays, boys and girls being outside, particularly yesterday. So I just wanted to kind of touch base. Um, if you're concerned at all about anything that's going on in the school, please come and talk to us and give us the opportunity to work with you and to respond to concerns. We haven't done a wet play in Lennox Town since 2020, so there, there are things that we learned over COVID 
that we kept. We called it COVID Keeps. And we were really lucky in Lennoxtown that our PTA funded um, waterproofs for the entire school. All children have waterproofs. Now, I acknowledge yesterday that a number of children did not have those on. That was not for the want of instruction. And I have spoken to particularly five, six and seven because they are all completely independent and very capable of putting on their waterproofs. So that certainly seems to be the crux of what, um, what happened yesterday. And I've been really proactive on that this morning. I've also spoken to one um, or two parents who actually came to speak to me this morning. Thank you for having the courtesy to do that. Um, we are more than happy to seek parent views on this. As I explained this morning, this is um, it was a COVID keep. But if it's not working for children and families, um, then th we can take consultation. We can look at what are the kind of um, alternatives that can sit round about that. But I, I would be continuing to, to talk to families about the health benefits of being outside. Um, why we just rolled with it post-COVID because it rains so much in Scotland. And why we'd reached out to our PT to support us with um, waterproofs to accommodate that. So we're happy to work with you and as I say, I'll touch base with the Parent Council and we can take a bit of consultation. But in the meantime, everybody is, is resorting their waterproofs. Every single child has a set. Um, I am aware that there are a couple of pairs of trousers with the primary sevens that had been ripped or torn. That is natural wear and tear and we will replace those. Um, and just if families can, can continue to support us with, you know, give us wellies. I, I spoke to a parent this morning who said, what about Crocs? That's what we tend to use at home. Amazing. Of course, you know, we can have to give us things in, but I'm not suggesting for one second that you go out and buy things. Um, but, you know, a spare pair of, of dry socks, anything like that would support. Um, if you could do that, that would be amazing. Um, and as I say, you know, if anybody's concerned about anything at all in regards to school matters, school business, um, what systems and processes... Come and talk to us and we'll work together and we'll get it sorted. So aside from that, um, I don't think there's anything else. If you just, can I just remind everybody, keep a wee eye on the updated parental engagement calendar because that's got the up and coming events for February and beyond. When I did the talking news last week, I did say there would be a separate bag drop um, in regard to the Valentine's Disco, which is... Thursday, the, was that next Thursday night? Next Thursday night. Yeah. So I will, um, I'll get on top of that and we'll get that communication out to you so that you can, I don't know, is everybody coming in red and we can spread the love. So that will come separately. So today, the letter that's come along with the talking news is the letter about the appointment of the new head teacher. Um, the information that's missing from that is that Caroline will be acting head. I'll just be there in the background and also that I will get the ongoing, um, I'll get the bag drop for the Valentine's that's got out to you. So if there's anything else at all, if there's anything you need, anything you're not sure about, anything we can help you with, come and talk to us. Thank you.